this breaking news in Lower Puna tonight. A lava, lava flow threatening homes is said to be moving about 300 to 400 yards per hour. At least four people have been evacuated by helicopter from a neighborhood east of Leilani Estates. Civil Defense wants residents from Isaac Holly Beach Park to Kalapana to be ready to evacuate in case Highway 137 is threatened. Uh, here is the fissure map. It's number 20 that's pumping out large volumes of lava. The flow headed southeast and crossed Pohoiki Road this afternoon. That cut off a community of about 40 homes. For now, residents are advised to shelter in place until further notice. And this all comes after experts confirmed a chemical change in the magma. What we're seeing tonight is the fresher, gassier lava. Geologists have been warning that this would speed up the flows. Our Mileka Lincoln has an incredible vantage point tonight near one of those outbreaks. Mileka. Aloha Keahi, Steph. What we have seen speed up certainly is how quickly the situation out here on the scene unfolds and changes. We've been out here for several hours now as invited guests of private property owners who have a lot near Puna Geothermal Venture just outside of Lenny Puna Gardens and their front yard is this incredible panoramic view of four of the most active of the 22 fissures that have broken out here along the lower east rift zone. We have heard the booming explosions of gas vents opening up near an extraordinarily dynamic fissure 19 that has sent a fountain of lava spewing upwards about 500 feet throughout the day consistently today. And also fissure 20, where we have seen the development of Pohoi Hoi lava as it has made its way up to the surface and then very steadily but very deliberately deliberately piled upon itself, creating what appears to be a pool, a cone, what some residents in the area are referring to as the possibility of a new crater that has just transformed in front of our eyes. We've seen it stack up more than 50 feet in the several hours that we've been out here today. And then we also witnessed what looks like the start of a new fissure. It's unclear whether or not USGS HVO officials have numbered or been aware of this new situation that has unfolded before us. But this fissure, we can tell you because we saw it ourselves, is responsible for claiming at least one house earlier today. That was around 4 o'clock this afternoon. When we first got here onto the scene just before noon, all this area was was forested albizia trees. And we could see this line of steam, white smoke, that was starting to make its way southwest toward the Lenny Puna Garden subdivision. And then in the hours that have progressed since this incredible new fissure has broken out. And look at that spattering, spewing lava, certainly not as high as the fountain that has developed out of fissure 19 that is responsible again for that deafening noise, similar to almost a military jet, multiple ones taking off all at the same time with their engines just rumbling. It is ricocheting across what has now been a lava field that has created inside a area that once was extremely densely forested, again, albizia trees. This is what the situation here on the ground is, and it changes so quickly, as I mentioned, that that's exactly why Hawaii County Civil Defense Agency officials are asking everyone within lava hazard zones one and two to be prepared for the possibility of immediate evacuation since they have no idea where the next fissure or eruption could potentially break out. Reporting live from just outside Lenny Puna Gardens, Mileka Lincoln, Hawaii News Now. Mileka, real quick, uh, it's a little frightening watching you out there. Are you not hot and do you <laughs> smell the fumes? I thought you were going to ask if I smell, and I probably do because I've been standing out here for hours today. But here's what I can tell you. We are so far upwind. We are mocha, and even though it looks like we are standing right on top of this incredible volcanic activity, as of course history is being made in front of our eyes here on Hawaii Island, we are an estimated about 500 yards away from this extraordinarily active fissure, Fisher 20. 
we're about a quarter of a mile away from that booming sound that you just heard, that thunderous roar that has been coming from that extraordinarily active lava fountain, which is believed to be Fisher 19. And we are in an area that is far upwind enough that you can't even smell the brush or the albizia trees burning, let alone an odor of sulfur in the air. Now, we did take all of the protective and precautionary measures that we have been asked to by civil defense officials. So we do have a helmet. We do have our respiratory masks on standby, but we are safe. For and joins us now live from Pahoa. Mileka, what, what is the latest on the wells at that facility? Aloha, good morning, Steve Grace. Well, Governor David Ige also said this morning during his interview with you guys that he does not believe that the state at this time has been able to address all the potential hazards posed by Puna Geothermal Venture Plant, and that's because of the difficulty that they're having plugging an 11th well. Now, there are 11 wells on site, 10 of them. They tell us they have already successfully quenched. However, they've been having difficulties with that 11th well. Now, according to personnel from Puna Geothermal, Geothermal Venture. They've been working around the clock trying to do this quenching procedure, which essentially is killing the wells by pumping cold water into them prior to plugging them up. And again, 10 of 11 are complete, but the remaining well has proven problem problematic, and they won't know until later today if their efforts were successful. According to PGV, one well has resisted both fresh and salt water injections in their efforts to kill the heat and pressure. That's why they are waiting on a substance similar to mud to get into the plant area today that they'll then attempt to use to plug that well to prevent lava from interacting with the gases that are trapped inside. And again, they won't know until later this morning if that substance even arrives. Now, this comes on the heels of Hawaii Emergency Management Agency officials saying that if lava interacts with PGV's wells, it could trigger the deadly release of hydrogen sulfide. And that's exactly why earlier this morning, again, Governor David Ige said that he did not believe that the state has totally mitigated all of the risks posed by Puna Geothermal Ventures operation, even though those 60,000 gallons of pentane have been moved off site, as we know, taken to Shipman Industrial in Keaau. There is still the question and the concern about what could happen if lava were to inundate the area where this 11th well, again, still has not been depressurized. Sources tell us it's unclear exactly what could happen, other than, of course, what they describe as that uncontrolled release of hydrogen sulfide. More coming up in the next half hour. For now, back to you guys.